What's the story behind Tupac Euthanasia Chain? The Euthanasia Chain, um, it came about because Pac wanted to start his own label, Euthanasia Records. Euthanasia. I think, no, it was going to be Machiavelli Records, but Euthanasia was his publishing company, if I'm not mistaken. He was going to start a publishing company. And he just wanted to get that chain made. I, I don't even know too many, I don't know too much information behind it or why he got it made. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be like an angel with wings. But the angel was the face of a demon, and it was holding a gun. And that's how Pac described it. Like, look, I got this chain made. You know what I mean? It's an angel, but they. So it was his metaphor. It was it was like a metaphor that he wanted to put out there. And um, I don't really know too much after that from him just explaining to us from that from that side of it. You know what I mean? That it was like a twisted angel or something like that. It was an angel of death, right? Yes, now you can say, you know, you can say it's an angel of death, you know what I mean? You can say, that's what people say, but Allahu Alam, God knows best. And um, definitely, I'm not sure. I heard an interview from somebody named Ricky Ross, and he told a story about being on a movie set with Tupac while Tupac was shooting the movie Greylock, and um, he did a car reading for Tupac, and Tupac pulled out the death card. Have you ever heard that story before? I never heard of nothing like that. Wow. I never heard of it, but most of them cars, they always talk that stuff. They got to get, they got to, most of these readers, they got to get you to come back. <laughs> you know what I mean? You never really have a person that got something read or a tarot card and it says something positive. It always got to frighten the people so you can come back and believe that those, them people are going to be the ones that have a solution for you. So I always look at them type of people as scam artists. And I'm sure Pac did too, man. Like, you don't believe that joke. He ain't gonna ever say, hey, tomorrow you're gonna have a nice day. Because now we have no reason to come back and pay you more to read again. You know what I mean? I do remember this, that one day we was in his house in Malibu. And he got a fan now. I remember this. And it was from a lady. And, um, and I remember Pac reading the letter to us. And the letter, the lady was saying things like, you know, Pac, you don't know me, but I need you to listen read what I'm telling you, pay attention to what I'm telling you, your life is in danger, um, you need to change your life. Like, I remember the woman saying things like that, and Pac was like, what, are you, what y'all think about that? And we probably just brushed it off, like, she's a nutcase, you know what I mean, a fan that, you know what I mean, but um, I do remember she was reaching out to him and saying, your life is in danger, the way you, you have to change your life, like, you know what I mean? And I remember we was like, man, she's crazy. But Pac, he took it upon himself to read us that letter and ask us, what do we think about it? You know what I mean? It's crazy. Wow, wow. Yeah, bro. i never forget that because we was in his house in Malibu and literally his backyard was the ocean. And the, like I was so messed up at that time that we used to sit in his living room and I remember the sound of the ocean Kind of like, and, and this is crazy. I think I lost his guidance, man, because the sound of the ocean, it was to me, it was like destroying my soul. Like I couldn't stand it. You know what I mean? That's how I know at that particular time of my life, I had no inner peace. Because I kept saying, man, the sound of the ocean, the waves. Now I can listen to the waves all day and it's beautiful. But at that time, I was like, man, these waves get on my nerves. I can't even relax. And, and Pops was like, move, you don't have no inner peace. He's like, if, if the waves are bothering you, that means you really don't have any inner peace. And I remember I was, like, these are certain incidents that I will never forget because these were certain incidents that made me start reflecting on life. Like, these were the seeds that, like, Pac was dropping and certain lessons of life was being dropped that I was paying attention. Like, wait a minute, is, is, is that what it is? That I really don't have no inner peace that waves something that's beautiful, an ocean that a lot that God created and the sound is beautiful, but it's so like it's tormenting to me, like, you know what I mean? So we used to sit in his living room and just talk, sometimes have deep conversations like that. So the person that made Machiavelli was the one telling you about inner peace? Yes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> See, Pac had that side of Pac had that side of him, man, that, like, Pac was a very intelligent person. He read a lot. He was a very intelligent person. He wasn't just like this, he was wild, but he had this side of him, like, like, he was very family-orientated. When most artists would be at a club and want to be out, he would just want his mother and his sisters and them to be at his house, find him chicken. Or his cousin Moo, like, he was that type of person. That's where he found his peace at, being around his family. You know what I mean? So some days he would sit and just listen to the sound of ocean, and I thought them jokers was crazy. 
Like, man, Pop used to listen to people like, um, what's her name? Atlanta Morissette. Like, <laughs> Pop is different. You know what I mean? He had, a, he, he had a different, he was a reader. He was a very educated, very intelligent guy and wise, you know what I mean? He just got caught up with the circumstances that was around him, but he was ahead of his time. 